welcome to the tutorial for the Hamsey skirt. We're going to start off by looking at the yoke, popping the side seams together. So you'll notice there's a back yoke that's on the fold, a left yoke and a front right yoke as it's an asymmetric design. So the left front is shorter than the right front and you'll see it's a grown on button stand. So I folded mine back five centimetres and pressed it. I've also popped some interfacing inside there. I use a very light one because it's a nice fine cotton lawn that I'm using here. So there's the back that's on the fold. Open that out. And if you lay your left front onto the left side like I have with the back panel right sides up towards you, you'll get them the right way round. Not that it really matters in that it's your skirt, you decide. There you go, you can see I put interfacing on the button stand for the right front as well. Place those neatly together, give them a pin. I'm going to stitch that with the one centimetre seam allowance. My seam allowances are always one centimetre unless say, they say otherwise. Just with a straight stitch those together. There we go, that's my seam. I'm going to overlock it or you can zigzag or overcast if you have that on your machine. I've just done them together again because it's a cotton lawn, it's very light and I shall press those towards the centre back. Just lay those out so that you can see how it's supposed to be. So there we go, I've pressed those seams towards the back. And now I'm just going to do a little bit of overlocking or finishing the edge on my button stand so that it's neatened up. I don't want to fold mine under because I don't like any extra bulk around my tummy. So that will be nice and flat. I've done that both sides. There we go. Okay, so now let's start on the waistband. Now I need two waistbands, one that's a mirror image of the other. So it's cut two and one of them is interfaced. This is my centre back. That's the top waistband, so there's no interfacing on that. That's my under waistband that has the interfacing on it. So you can see there's a pair there. And this is my right front. Again, there's one without and one with, and that is also a pair. Let's check this one as well. Left front, that's it, one pair, one with, one without. Perfect. So we'll put together the outer waistband first. That's my back piece. Lay that out. Obviously my right front is the longer of the other two pieces. So let me get myself orientated. Right, so we're gonna have your back piece right side up towards you. And the right front goes on the right side like so. Pop a pin in it before I get confused again. And the left front goes on the left side like that. So let's just double check that that works out. Yes, that's perfect. So I'm gonna stitch those side seams up. Again, one centimeter from the edge. There we go, back tack, off we go. Great, that's one outer waistband together. I'm gonna press these seams open. And it just reduces any bulk, even though it's very fine fabric. It's nice to have it floaty light across your tummy. There we go, all pressed. So that's your outer waistband. So now for the under waistband, the bits that have the interfacing on. And this, it's done in the same way, but it's the opposite. It's a mirror image. So you want that long piece 
on the left and the short piece on the right this time. Pin them, stitch them one centimetre. Just double check myself. Yep, yeah, that's perfect. There we go, all stitched. Press those seams open again. There we go, that's our under waistband. Let me just show you that now if we match it with the outer waistband, right sides together, they should be the same. That's it. So we've got that right front, which is the longer piece. And then the back. Just check those side seams match because you want to check them now rather than later. There we go. Perfect. So now I've taken that under waistband, the one that's interfaced, and I've just overlocked around the bottom edge, the bottom of the curve. And I'm going to pin them together now at the top, matching those seams. Match those up nicely, pop a pin in. You'll want to pin yours all the way around, I'm sure. But basically we're matching those upper curves and we're going to stitch a centimetre from the edge all the way around. Back tack to start. There we go. I'm going to just now do a little bit of trimming and clipping. I like to cut the corners off my seam allowances. And then I'm going to snip in towards the stitching, just up towards it. Careful not to cut through. I've done it every sort of centimetre and a half, two centimetres. Just to help that nice curve flatten out when you do your edge stitching, which is what we're going to do next. Now you want to push all that seam allowance towards your interfaced waistband. Give that a press, make sure it's all nice and flat before you start and then stitch right on the edge there, about a millimetre away. I'm starting a centimetre back from the end because I'm going to bag out my corners in a little while and it will just be easier to do that if you haven't started your edge stitching right at the edge. There you go, just make sure that that seam allowance is all towards the interfaced waistband and go all the way. Stop a centimetre before the end. There we are, look. And that will just make it a lovely crisp edge when you pr press it over. There we go, we fold it and then give it a press. It makes it really lovely curve. And there it is pressed, looking very neat and crisp at the edge. So that's how it should look from the outside. OK, let's grab the yoke again and attach our waistband. There we go. So we want the uninterfaced part of your waistband. I've marked my centre back by folding it in half, matching the side seams and finding the centre point that way. So I've got a little snip there. You can always use a pencil or something if you're worried about snipping in too far. And I've also done the same on my yoke. So I'm going to match those. I know that is the centre back on both. That way my waistband will be evenly eased onto my yoke. Quick pin in there. Then we match the side seams. Put those together. And the other side seam. Now we move towards the opening. 
So remember we've got this button stand which needs folding back. You can always stitch those bits together if it helps you. And I'm going to overlap my centimetre seam allowance so that's hanging free before I get to the yoke. So pop a pin in there. And I'm going to do the same for the other side. Folding that button stand back with the interfacing on. And I've pressed it that five centimetres back. Again, you can stitch that together if you want to first. And then I'm making sure I've got an overhang of my centimetre seam allowance before I start stitching it to the yoke. Pop a pin in there. So I'm going to stitch a centimetre from the edge. So here we go. Centimetre from the edge. And I'm just going to ease that waistband onto the yoke. It should fit exactly. There we are. All stitched on. Take those pins out. Let's have a look. There we go. That's all eased on nicely. And what you need to do next is to press that with the seam allowance up towards the waist. There we go. Give that a quick press. That's all smooth. So there we are. It's all nice and flat. And next we're going to bag out those corners so you can see the overlap there and I'm literally just going to turn it inside out, match the edges and I'm going to stitch that centimetre seam allowance. And do the same for this side as well, fold it over and stitch down. You want to try and get your stitching as snug to your yoke at the bottom edge as possible so that it's a nice continuation of the waistband. There we go, you can see what I mean there, it sort of continues down. Clip that corner and trim away a little bit of the excess. Again, it's not terribly bulky this fabric, but just means a little bit less bulk over your tum. Just fold that through, give it a little poke through. And that should look like a nice continuous edge. All nice and flat at the back as well. I'm going to stitch in that ditch in a minute. I'm just going to turn this one through as well. Clip that corner, trim the seam allowance down, turn it through. Give a little wiggle. And I'll be stitching in that ditch between the waistband and the yoke. Take your time doing this so it's nice and neat. It all makes a difference. You can pin it, tack it, whatever makes you feel more confident. There we go. Nice flat waistband on the back. It's all looking crisp. Tidy up those little straggly bits. There we go. That's one yoke and waistband. Okay, let's grab these skirt sections. So you should have three pieces all 60 centimeters long unless you've chosen to lengthen or shorten this skirt and you'll have your center back piece which I've laid on the table right side up and I'm now pinning my right front at the right side and my left front which is the smallest piece the shortest piece to the left side of my back I'm going to stitch the centimetre down. Here we go, down the side seams. I wouldn't normally use my selvage because uh, they can shrink or distort the fabric a little bit when you wash it. But obviously I've washed this previously and it's been fine and I will trim it off with my overlocker in a moment. There we go. So that's two side seams I've stitched and overlocked. I'm just going to press those to one side. There we go, neatly pressed. 
Next, we're going to prep the centre front. I know it's not quite at the centre, but we're going to pretend it is. There's the interfacing, five centimetres. That's my button stand. So it's the fronts of my fabric on the left side and the right side. I've done the same there. Five centimetres wide and for the length of the skirt. And I've overlocked the edge to neaten it. Next, you want to fold it back and give it a press. Let's put some gathering threads in. So here's the top of my skirt. My fabric is directional, so to avoid me gathering the wrong edge, I've already overlocked the hem just so that I know I'm doing the correct part. Here we go. I'm going to undo that and I'm going to start my gathering away from the interfacing because that's going to be tucked on the inside. We don't want that gathered. It's just the top. So I'm stitching my first row of stitches. I'm using number five stitch on my machine. That's quite a nice length for gathering. And I'm doing it a centimetre from the edge. I'm also stopping when I get to the side seams, just coming off and going on again, so that I have a break in my gathers because sometimes if the gathering threads get very long, they can break and I don't want that. So that's my first row. I will do the second row halfway between the raw edge and my first row of stitching. There we go. That's the gather threads in. Okay, so let's get this gathered. That's my skirt, that's my yoke. Get it the right way around. So I'm going to open up this button stand and match those overlocked edges together. And then I'm going to match my side seams. In those together. And the centre back, I've already folded my skirt in half and popped my little notch in there so I know that's my back. And I'm going to do the same for the yoke now. Match those side seams together, fold it in half. And I'm just going to pop a little snip there so I know that's my centre back. Again, you can use your pencil or a safety pin. There we go, that's matched together. Side seam. And the other front. There we go. Position those together. And now we're going to grab these gathering threads. Always put up the bobbin thread. Pull them up together so that they're the same length. And just gently pull the gathers along until the yoke matches the skirt in length. I've left the front bit next to the button stand flat. Because I don't really want gathers around where my buttons are. So I've left sort of two or three centimetres of it flat. The rest of it's all gathered and I'm just kind of teasing them along to try and make them as even as possible. There we go. Let's pick these ones out as well. You can always use a buttonhole thread or something that's a bit thicker in your bobbin when you're doing gathering threads if you're worried about them breaking or snapping. Be super careful past that centre back pin for the back panel. If it's your long panel, just gently pull the threads past there. And again, ease them all out so they're roughly even. 
can always have a little tinker with them on the way through the machine as well. But you want the yoke and the skirt the same length. Okay, popping the last couple of pins in now. And you can see there they lie nicely together. And I'm going to stitch a centimetre in and I'm stitching over that first row of gather stitches. You don't want to worry about if they show when you've uh, finished. You can always unpick the little bit of gather if it shows. Take all those pins out and I'm going to overlock that together so that it's nice and neat. Put that under the machine now. And there we go. And we're nearly done. So that seam allowance wants to be pushed upwards in towards the yoke and given a little steam or a little press there we go so now we're going to do the hem There we go. You can see where I'd overlocked it previously. I'm going to fold back this button stand. And I'm just going to bag these corners out. So I'm just going to stitch along the interfaced bit a centimetre up from the overlocking. I'm going to do that both sides just to bag out that little corner. Makes it look so much nicer and neater. There we go. So you can see I've literally just stitched straight across. Now I'm just going to clip that corner off and trim the interface part down a little bit. Poke it through, give it a wiggle. You can see that looks nice. And then I want to press up my seam allowance that centimetre so that it sort of flows on nicely. It just looks like a continuous edge. Let's clip this other side. So clipping the corner, trimming off a little bit of the seam allowance, turning it through, give it a little wiggle. Make sure that seam is right on the edge. And you give it a little press and press that seam allowance up. I'm just going to stitch that now I've pressed it and I'm starting at the edge of the button stand rather than going right across. So I've stitched it all the way around. So we've got neatly bagged out corners and a nice crisp hem. Tidy up any edges that are uh, have threads and give it another press. So let's have a go at these buttonholes. Now I couldn't decide which colour went best so I've gone for one of each and oh now I want one on my waistband and I'm going to put three on my yoke. So just by eye really I've just kind of laid them down. I've pinned my yoke together. I'm going to do mine a centimetre in. My buttons are two centimetres. So basically, my waistband, I'm going for the middle of it. So I've drawn a line horizontally in the middle and a centimetre in, and then I've done the two centimetres width for my button. Then I'm just going to, again, by eye, pop my other buttons down and measure the distance between the holes, the top hole to, to top hole and top hole to, to top hole. Oh, that's hard to say. So that I get them equidistant. Again, a centimetre in. 
it's about six centimeters on mine so I've just gone a centimeter in six centimeters down a centimeter in six centimeters down a centimeter in and then I've marked the sort of horizontal lines that are two centimeters which is the size of my button on each mark I've used a water soluble pen for mine Now this is how my machine does it, so I'm lining it up to start the buttonhole. You'll have to consult your manual for how your machine does a buttonhole. And always practice. I had practiced, I promise, before I'd done this. Always, always, always. Because you also need to cut them and make sure the button will go through, because sometimes your machine will do a buttonhole that's a little bit too big or a little bit too small. So you definitely need to check it all before you do your actual garment. Buttonholes are just the devil's own to unpick. So you want to try and get your best chance of getting it right first time. Now I've got my buttonhole chisel and my buttonholes. That's how I'm choosing to do mine. You can put a pin at the end and use your seam ripper. Not for the faint hearted. This is a much more dignified way of doing it, I think. I just roll the chisel backwards and forwards over my buttonhole until it's cut through nicely, nice and clean cut. That's it. That's one. Do that for all of them. You can do more buttons all the way down the skirt if you choose to. I thought I might, if it's a bit saucy and a bit high opening, I'll probably pop a couple of poppers on mine. But I quite like the idea of it being open and a bit floaty for summer. Trimming away those. Again, you may need to um, stitch those in if your machine doesn't do a little automatic stitch in like mine does. Don't want them unraveling. So, I'm matching up. I have attempted to match my pattern on my yoke, so I'm just going to pin those together where they need to be when the, it's done up. And then I'm going to mark where my buttons need to go. So, Nice and flat. I've got my water soluble marker again. I'm going to pop it in the hole, wiggle it about, and that should mark where exactly where my button needs to be stitched on. Show you that a bit closer. There we go, right at the end of the open button hole. Nice big dollop there of blue. So that I know that's where I need to start stitching my buttons on. That's it. And that's it with the buttons on. I didn't uh, show you how to sew a button on. I'm sure you can do that yourself. There we go. One finished skirt with a very neat button plucket. Enjoy.